The United States should suffer. We're supposed to pull back. We're supposed to go hungry. We're supposed to go without energy, that is heat and air conditioning, because the rest of the world hasn't figured out how to do it. Isn't that absurd? Capitalism is under attack. It's under attack by the left, and it's under attack by pseudo-conservatives. The market system. Now, ladies and gentlemen, look around you. As bad as it is, it's better than any other place on the face of the earth. It's better than China and Russia. It's better than uh, uh, France and Britain. Why? Because we're still more capitalistic than most other nations. Now, the system's unraveling. There's no question about it. It's under attack. It's under attack by the Marxist left, and they write books about it. It's under attack by the likes of Bernie Sanders, who wrote an entire book about it. It's under attack also by the pseudo-conservatives who give themselves new names and say the market system is okay, but we can do better. Who can do better? Who's going to be in charge? When you surrender a market system, you're surrendering it to someone and something. What are we surrendering it to? Socialists. Economic socialism. Economic socialism is part of Marxism. So if you go halfway on economic socialism, you're going halfway towards destroying capitalism. I can tell you the Heritage Foundation undertook a task and spent money and resources on it and used some of their brain power to figure out how many federal regulations come with fines and penalties and even jail time. You know what they came up with? They don't know. But they know it's over 10,000. These are regulations never passed by Congress. These are regulations issued by the bureaucracy. Anybody that's had to build something on property, they've come across this. Anybody who's had to build something near a, not even a pond, near a, a water hole, they've had to come across this. Anybody who wants to put fencing around their property has come across this. It's like the federal government's become an HOA, if you will, of sorts. But anyway, capitalism is under attack. And it's under attack by the radical left, and it's under attack by the pseudo-conservatives. They think they have better ideas. They don't. There is no better idea. Why? Capitalism is a spontaneous economic system. That is, it goes hand in hand with freedom. Hand in hand with freedom. Capitalism is the freest system on the face of the earth. Everybody can participate at some level if they wish. If people want to participate at a very significant level, they're free to try. Doesn't mean you're going to succeed because maybe somebody doesn't want to buy what you're selling. Some product or service. Why are we required to buy it? No. So you might fail. But capitalism allows you to try, try, and try again. It also allows you to go broke. But think about this. Why is capitalism so brilliant? Well, first of all, nobody created it. It just is what it is. And secondly, it's every individual making decisions for themselves. What do you want to do with your life? If you earn money, what do you want to do with your money? You want to save it? You want to spend it? You want to invest it? You want to develop something? You want to burn it in the fireplace? What do you want to do? Only you know what you want to do. Some person at Housing and Urban Development in Washington, D.C., they don't have the foggiest idea who you are. Or some politician in Washington, D.C., a House member represents 800,000 constituents. They don't know anything about you. They have an idea about what they want to do and an ideology. How about a senator? I mean, what about a senator from California who has, what, tens of millions of constituents? They can't possibly know either. And of course, the president has no idea. But it's the same with the bureaucracy. Two million people strong in Washington, D.C. Do they have any idea what's going on in Peoria, Illinois? Have they ever been to Peoria, Illinois? Do they know your name? Have they met your family? No, but you know all those things. And so you get to make the decisions for yourself. That is the genius of capitalism. They like to talk about bottom up and middle out when really they believe in top down and the iron fist. Capitalism is bottom up. Capitalism is grassroots. And that's why it's so successful. We have no idea what somebody's trying to develop in their garage, whether it's in Palo Alto, California, or wherever it is. But it could 
change the way we live in very significant and positive ways. I don't know if it's intentional, but on the History Channel, they have a series from time to time, the people who made the mass production of food possible, the people who made the mass production and use into your homes of energy possible. It is absolutely fascinating. What if there wasn't a John D. Rockefeller, who we're all supposed to hate, who grew up poor, who grew up the son of a preacher, and yet he became the wealthiest man this nation's ever known, even wealthier than Elon Musk. What did he do? Well, he created the Industrial Revolution for many, in many respects. He developed crude oil. Then he developed natural gas. Then he developed a way to transport it. Not trains, but pipelines. He developed propane. He developed a way to get it to everybody's home. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? What about Tesla? What about Thomas Edison? Well, really, they developed a way to bring electricity into your home. 110 years ago, to get electricity into your home, we take it for granted. We flip a switch, although in California they don't anymore. They brown out some blackouts, thanks to the government, because they're regressing, because they're more socialist than capitalist. But look at all these things, the light bulbs, we take them for granted. Thomas Edison again. Or the automobile. The automobile is only 120 years old or so in this country in a serious mass manufacturing way, available to every person in the country. It's amazing. Frozen food, Swanson, where did that come from? Look at all the meats and look at how we're able to protect meat so it lasts a long time. That wasn't always the case. Cheese. Cheese used to get rancid as soon as you cut it, within 48 hours. Well, who developed a way to fix that? Kraft. And we can go on and on about these geniuses who did so much for the future of the country, and they did it under capitalism. Why do you think the communist Chinese, as advanced as they are militarily, has to steal our technology? They didn't develop this technology. Maybe they improved upon it, but they spent a fortune with God knows how many spies and others who are stealing our technology and stealing our secrets because that system cannot develop it. Look around the rest of the world. Look around the rest of the world. The attack on capitalism now is that we produce too much. The attack on capitalism 30 years ago was that we didn't produce enough for the average man. So the radical left Marxists, they've changed their attack. Again, the attack used to be, you can't produce enough for our people in this country. Now the attack is, we produce too much and the rest of the world goes without. Does that make any sense to you? Does that make any sense to you? If the, the rest of the world or much of the rest of the world has systems that cannot develop a certain mineral or doesn't know how to build an assembly line or whatever, a banking system, then we should suffer? Then the United States should suffer? We're supposed to pull back? We're supposed to go hungry? We're supposed to go without energy, that is heat and air conditioning, because the rest of the world hasn't figured out how to do it? Isn't that absurd? Maybe the rest of the world ought to learn from us rather than us regressing. Obama used to say, and others have said too, that we're 3% or 5% of the world's population, but we use 25% of the resources. That doesn't mean we're taking resources from somebody else. It means we know how to adapt and use resources in a way that we can adapt them to us. It doesn't mean we're stealing somebody's resources. It doesn't mean if we use 10% of the world's resources, the rest of the world will be better off. No, it means we'll be horrifically worse off and the rest of the world will be the same way it is. Want to see more? Sign up for Levin TV.